in the 2017 police interceptor utility. Um, you may know that if you have a 2016 to 19, that remote start is a lot trickier to get than just as simple as turn it on in four scan, like you can in the 13s to 15s. So if you have a 2013 to 15 uh, interceptor, go ahead and watch my video on those. It'll be a lot easier for you. But if you have a 16 to 19, this will be for you. So. You have to install, even though that the, the, all the wiring and everything is present, uh, the ability to do remote start is present on your interceptor, you do have to have some modules um, that are missing, and so or aftermarket modules. So uh, there's a guy that has a video on how to do it with all the factory equipment. Uh, you can look up his YouTube channel. He makes really high quality videos. Uh, his username is read the manual, or that's his channel. Um, but I wanted to go with a cheaper route and I didn't want to spend much more than a hundred bucks. So I went with this one by Start X. I'll put the link in the description. Now there's two options when you go to buy this. Um, there's one that's about a hundred bucks and one that's about $30 or more that says something about in the dash, like menu in the dash or something like that. Pretty much that just means that I think that it comes with a, a module or I don't know exactly how it does it because I didn't buy it, but it comes with the ability to load up your um, settings in Forescan. Um, well, so I have Forescan, but if you don't have Forescan and you don't want to get Forescan just for this, I think it will enable all these remote start options for you. Um, so that's kind of cool. So for 30 bucks, but guess what? For 30 bucks, you can also buy an ELM and... Uh, you know, and then get Forescan for free. And as long as you have a laptop, you could do it all yourself and then have Forescan. So I would probably just recommend not getting the one that's a little bit more expensive and get the cheaper one. And then if you don't have it already, get an ELM scanner and Forescan and then just do it yourself. And then you can do a lot of other stuff too. Anyway, so this is supposed to be relatively plug and play. Um, we're going to find that out. I haven't done this yet. So um, you're going to be doing it with me kind of real time. So in the kit comes with an instruction manual that's inside that we'll be referencing. It comes with this little module that is in packaging and it's got three plugs. It's got a black one that is referenced. The black, all these different plugs are referenced in the um, wire in the manual. Um, but there's that little black plug, the little white plug, and then the main plug. And then we've got our harness. So the cable is pretty simple. It's just an intermediary cable um, that goes in between the OBD2 scanner plug um, not the actual OBD2, but the, the cable that plugs into the back of the OBD2. Um, so you will be able to keep using your scanner and everything, no problem. And then it's got the little plugs, the little black plug and the little white plug, uh, and the main, uh, harness for your module. In order for this to work, you do need to have a programmed, uh, you know, OEM key fob, whether this one or the one with the red button, you can't use Chinese aftermarket keys on these, uh, on these newer interceptors. Um, but anyway, so I have this programmed. Go look at my four scan video uh, on how to uh, do this or go look up the video by um, read the manual. He's got a really good one on this as well. So um, you're gonna need to get this programmed. Uh, like I said, you can't use the cheap Chinese keys on these newer interceptors. On the 13 to 15s you can, but not on these. So this is how we're going to be remote starting it is by going pretty much lock, unlock, lock, and that will send the signal to start this up. So this is our remote for auto start. Okay, let's get started. So according to the installation manual, all you have to do is unplug. Here's our OBD2, OBD2 port. So this is where you'd plug in your scanner, but behind it is this plug. And we're taking our harness and we are plugging it in like that. I'll worry about rerouting cables and everything after I've got it all installed and tested. But so you pretty much plug in, all you do is add this harness in and then plug both sides back. Okay. So at this point, we should have full function of our um, OBD2 again. So we've got our module here and we've got our black port, white port. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna be using all the plugs on these. They're probably relatively universal modules that are just, I don't really know. 
a lot of plug, some of these plugs we're not gonna be using. So what we are gonna be using is the white plug on this side. We'll take this white plug. And then on this side, there's the black plug and it's that. And that's all that's on this harness. So the big plug and the white plug on this side looks like won't be used and the red plug looks like it won't be used. So it says, and press and hold down the programming button. So we haven't attached our module yet, but there's the programming button right there. So we're gonna hold down our button. We're gonna plug in our connector and then the LEDs are gonna be going and okay, then I let go. All right, so that's how you do it, I guess. So now the blue light is on. Insert the remaining white connector. All right, so on this opposite side, we're gonna plug in the white connector like that. So it says, turn the key to the on position. So we'll take our key, turn it to the on position. Um, the blue LED will turn off. Can't even see it. Okay, so now I've got a red and yellow. So it said, the blue LED will turn off, the red and yellow light will turn on. Cool, wait up to 45 seconds until the blue LED starts flashing. It is now flashing. Turn the ignition off, and all LEDs turn off, sweet. Turn the ignition on, and LED, yellow LED will turn on. Well, so far it's batting 100 here. So, um, wait five seconds. It's been about five seconds. Turn the ignition off and all LEDs will turn off. It says that our module is now programmed. So in both the body control module and the IPC, uh, you're going to have to change two settings each and they're the same settings and those two settings are uh, let's see you're going to do the hood switch so hood switch you're going to switch to present which I've already done and then remote start you're going to enable and then Let's see, so you're gonna do that in the body control module. And then we will go to the IPC. And switch our to HS. Okay. And then go to hood, hood switch right here. Change that to enabled. And then go down to remote start. And you're going to want to enable. Uh, the remote start and then I also enabled the climate settings and the rear defrost and those are the only ones that applied to me because I don't have heating heated seats or a heated steering wheel and now if I go into my settings and go into vehicle now I have the remote start menu and I have my climate control and I just set it for I'm going to set it for auto and then duration I want it 15 minutes and that's it. So I didn't, I didn't click right, but because I already did all this, but you would just come down here, click right on both modules, um, and then that's all you need to do in force scan. So here's where the hood switch goes. I show this in my video for the other interceptor, but um, so this is a little dummy holder, pretty much, that the harness, if you are equipped with it, will plug into. And so all this is is a little interruption switch that only goes here. Um, and so I went ahead and added it. I'll put the part number in the description, but all you do is pop it right in where this thing went. You can throw this thing away now and plug it in. And now your hood switch is enabled as mechanically. All right, now that we have the hood switch enabled, um, we'll go ahead and try this. 
be a delay. There we go. Now it works. If you want to turn it back off, all you got to do is uh, do a reverse sequence and it should turn off. There it is. Hope this helps.